there's football challenges for uh, Carlos Quiroz in uh, in Qatar as well. That's where we'll start. They have made the quarterfinals of the Gulf Cup, which after they lost to Haiti in that first game was probably not a scenario we thought we'd necessarily be talking about. They've sca- scraped through with uh, with some classic Quiroz ball, um, a 1-0 snatch and grab win against Mexico. Check out the stats of that game um, if you want to... Uh, if you want to see something quite unbelievable. But, you know, we spoke about this in Qatar. It's the result of the match. There's only one stat that really matters, and they won 1-0. Um, this is a team very much in transition still. There's a lot of big-name players that aren't in this side, new players getting an opportunity. Can we necessarily read anything into this? Um, some of the results necessarily haven't been um, all that good, um, considering, but, you know, they've... They've picked up the win against Mexico, which is the big one. Do you think we can read anything into it, Martin? I, th- I think it's transition time, isn't it? I think this is these are the first three matches or three competitive matches that um, Carlos Carras has been in charge. It's a team that is missing eight of um, its best players or what we thought were the best players um, heading into this tournament who've been rested, uh, Al Sad and Alderhael. So I don't think many people are expecting the world um, coming into it. All three matches have probably gone the way that we expected them in terms of Qatar were struggling to get themselves into it. They played a bit of good football against El Salvador, but um, they've really kind of struggled, uh, sorry, Honduras, um, but haven't really got themselves settled really into a kind of a rhythm that they would have normally wanted to play, uh, especially under Felix Sanchez. The first time it's kind of just started to click of how Kiros is going to have that impact on Qatar was against Mexico, where they were just... They ran off the pitch for 90 minutes. It, was, it wasn't it was a case of Mexico going slow on them until the last 20 minutes or so. They went at them from the first night, uh, first minute onwards. But you can see the kind of difference in a couple of the individual players, um, uh, how they've reacted to those kind of scenarios. Uh, one, for example, is Tarek Salman, a player who is clearly under the mould of Felix Sanchez, a ball player and centre-back, quite short centre-back, hasn't got the phys- physicality there for it. Brilliant at a kind of three at the back formation, but I was kind of concerned about him going into a four at the back formation under Kiros, and and so it came came to force against Haiti. He was terrible. He quickly got a yellow card after five minutes and really looked all over the place. Kiros has stuck firm with him, and in the last couple of games, you can see it, there's been pictures of him kind of hugging each other and really kind of having that kind of mental figure after the match, and he was phenomenal in the game last night. Um, not necessarily the kind of individual kind of brilliance on the ball, etc. that he, he we were used to him from him, but he was putting his head in where he, he was going to get hurt. He was throwing his body in front of the shots, etc. And you can see that's what Kiros's impact is going to be straight away. It's the the belief and the kind of we can take on the world. And that's what Qatar need at the moment because there's only a limited amount of stock heading into the next Asian Cup. They need to play at 110% to even have a kind of a chance of getting out to the quarterfinals onwards. That's what I've kind of seen is that it's the belief rather than the structure or maybe that we've turned a corner. Um, it'll be interesting when the, the kind of the more established players come in and see if that belief continues. But I think this is the positives that we can see. Yes, yeah, certainly. I I think that in some ways, seeing the result today and, and reading the, the stat sheet afterwards, it, it almost almost made me happy in a way because what Qatar needed after the World Cup, and we, we spoke about it as well in Qatar and afterwards, was they needed some defensive steel and some solidity within that side. They were so soft and so weak and meek at the, the World Cup. Um, we know this is Carlos Kiroz's, you know, go-to. It's it's what he does with his teams. He he makes them defensively sound. They're solid. They're difficult to to break down. They might not play the best football, but perhaps that's a little bit what Qatar needed. We know they've got some great attacking talent, but they were never known necessarily for their great defensive steel. So to see them put in that performance, backs to the wall performance, and not crumble and not concede and not give in, um, is actually maybe pleasing as the sort of first building block for the the Carlos Quiroz era. Um, you spoke to him recently, Michael, as well when you were. I think it was when you were over in uh, Qatar for the uh, mm. was it for the Asian Cup draw? Was it a separate interview? I, but I you spoke him. to him uh, recently. 
yeah yeah i i i, I had a, a brief chat with them in 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 doha and then we did a uh, unfortunately, at that point, he didn't have time to do a, a, a sit-down one-on-one interview. So we 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 sort of uh, convened on the phone whenever I got back to Hong Kong a couple of weeks later. And uh, look, Carlos is Carlos is always he's always a, a great interview. He's always very much looking to control his own message and 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 be in control of. Uh, the perception of himself and his football and his coaching style and 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 he's a master of that. He's very good at that. Um, he's always he's always a very engaging interviewee. Um, and this on this occasion was 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 no you know was no different. I think you know to go back to the point that Martin mentioned about eight of the sort of key players are missing from from this squad that Carlos has called up not just for the gold, for the gold cup but also the two friendly matches that they were playing beforehand um and we talked about that at, at some length and and one of the things you know we we've talked about this as well is that for for the longest time Qatar had a core of 13 players maybe 14 players i mean i remember i remember covering them when they were attempting to qualify for the for the olympic games in rio de janeiro in 2016 when they were comfortably the best team in that competition at the asian under 23s a team that ultimately became pretty much the core of the national team. But once you go beyond their starting 11 at that point, you know, they didn't really have much else. They run out of gas. And it, we've seen it so many times when you get beyond that core 8, 10, 12 players that they don't have the depth of squad. And this is the thing that he's trying to address. This is the thing that he's trying to change. As any coach, I suppose, in that position would be trying to do because ultimately, um, you know, these players are all getting older. They're all getting towards the, if not their peak, uh, beyond their peak. And even into you look at players like uh, Hassan Haidos, uh, for example, you know, 32, 33 years of age, they're certainly getting towards the end of their careers. Um, coupled with, um, I suppose, the stagnation that had probably set in within the squad. And this was also something that Carlos talked about at, at length was, because the players had been in so many camps and so many training camps for, for for such a long period of time, building up to the World Cup, that he just thought that they were mentally fatigued. Um, and one of the things that he's looking to do is to refresh the squad, to refresh, um, not terms, not just in terms of personnel, but in terms of trying to to reset everything so that whenever he does have his full squad available, that they're in a better place and that they're more able to. Uh, to perform to the, the the best of their ability, because you know I think we we all would agree we didn't see we didn't see the best of Qatar at the World Cup in twenty twenty two. We certainly didn't see the Qatar team that was so impressive at the twenty nineteen Asian Cup when they won that. Um, and so there's a real there's a real desire on his part to to completely refresh, whether it's in terms of the mental side of things with the existing squad or to refresh with bringing new blood into the team. Yeah, and we certainly saw the the challenges of the limitations of of the talent they've got coming through at the under twenty Asian Cup last year, and again at the under seventeen Asian Cup that's just been completed as well. They got smashed six one by Korea in the opening game, drew nil all with Iran, which is a, a a fair result, but then lost to Afghanistan as well, which is just not a result that you would expect at that level from Qatar. And when you couple that with as I said, the challenges we saw at the under twenties last year when they got spanked by Australia nine one, I think it was, and and some other heavy defeats. Um, it, it it shows the the limitations and the limits they've got on on that playing talent, as you said, and the the need to to build the depth 